What's up, y'all? Rich Slayton here. Today, something you've all been waiting for for a very long time. That's right, the rematch, the epic rematch. Moogie, Mohamed Light running it back from CRL 2021 World Finals. This time, a golden ticket trip to World Finals. On the line, it's the Masters Challenge Grand Championship, Moogie Mohamed Light. Before we get into it though, we are on that road to 100K, so if you haven't yet, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. We are trying to get there before the end of the year. Like this video, comment, do all the fun things, and of course use code RICH in that Supercell shop to support everything we do right here on the channel. That's it, that's enough. Now dig in, hang out for a while. Here we go, the super epic rematch, Moogie and Mohammed Light. The total prize pool was like $3,000. And now here right. we are, where these guys collectively will take home $25,000. Here we go, folks. The rematch. Moogie and Mohamed Light. Going to go ahead and end that poll here. And the results um, are 66% of you pick Mohamed Light and 33% pick Moogie. Almost about 1.4, 1,400, 1,400 of you voted. <laughs> so for this first best of three people here voting for Mo. Which makes sense, but uh, I always got to side with the person that's in the winner's bracket. You know, they have the, the big MO, the momentum. And so, yeah, I got to say, uh, I, I would, uh, I, my, my vote is for Moogie. Now, this is interesting because people are talking about, hey, we're going to see some great cycle play from these two. Muhammad Light playing Royal Giant Fish Boy and Moogie looking like Golem here in this one. So very interesting. Maybe not the uh, the the matchup you might have expected between these two. Right. I mean, Moogie has already pulled out the Golem Night Witch before, and we see it right there. Great call out. Uh, Golem placed in the corner. Um, you know, it, it just puts Muhammad Light in a weird spot. Can he build a good enough push, but also still have enough elixir for the lightning? Is the question right there? He is going to play the Fisherman High. Not going to try and bring the Golem to the King Tower. And so he no longer has to worry about that kind of lightning play. And Fishboy follows the Golem. No more pulling after that first one. Golem will get some good damage here. So the lead will go from Mohammed Light back to Moogie as we go past our first two minutes into double elixir time, 1908 to 2177. And of course, those of you who follow Clash Royale Esports with any sort of regularity, know that these two met each other at CRL World Finals, where again, Moogie was in the winner's bracket and Mo was in the lower bracket. And Moogie shut it down in just a single best of three and got a big win with Bowler Loon Freeze. Of course, now with NATO no longer in play for Moogie, we will not be seeing Bowler Loon Freeze at least in this first BO3. And just like that, look at this, Royal Giant gets some good damage here. Lead goes back to Mo. Not panicking. We often see the NATO get pulled up. The, I mean... We often see the NATO get, uh, pull the RG up, but then immediately after that, we see kind of just an overwhelm from the RG side. We see, oh, just RGs constantly. Oh my goodness, cycled at the bridge. Will it matter? Lightning on top of everything. Gets the tower down to 632. Uh, a missed NATO. I, if that was on my bingo card, I would have not uh, had that as one of my things for uh, Moogie's gameplay today. Oh, Moogie goes up and tries to golem up right at the bridge in response. Archer Queen goes invisible. Hunter doing its work to chunk that golem down. And can he get the NATO connection with the Golden Knight here? The ghost still alive, not gonna go ahead and do it. Hunter playing high. And Mohammed Light holding on with 90 seconds left. Baby Dragon forced out high. Baby Dragon not even necessary because of the bar barrel interaction. Golem placed at the bridge again, but at this point, can he really respond with anything? You know, he can go Mega Minion plus Goblin Cage on top, NATO back, doesn't matter. Fisherman gonna pull the Golem to the King Tower, and we are looking at a GG well played by Muhammad. Uh, and you know, you've seen the, the laughing, the you see how relaxed Mo has been all day? That's not the same Muhammad Light here. He is dialed in, he is focused, Sure, he gets a smile here and there, but this is a this is a different Mo when it comes to look. It's five thousand dollars on the line. Obviously, he cares about it, 
but you see the, the, the difference in demeanor when he knows he's playing against one of the few people who, you know, you're talking about. There's not many people you put and you go, hey, they win a significant percentage of their matchups against against Muhammad Light. Few who people would say might have an advantage over him, potentially. And he's facing that guy right now. So you see the shift in the way that most focused right now. Absolutely. Game number one comes out with RG control. He's not, you know, let me let me make sure that I'm saying this correctly. Um, and yeah, he, he's not going with the RG giant skeleton. He's, you know, making sure that he's cleaning up every side of it. He doesn't want to be predictable. If he uses giant skeleton and it's maybe a variant without fisherman, the game could have, you know, gone sideways quickly. Yeah. Um, so just using tried and true decks, doesn't want to get cute, doesn't want to get tricky. We could see that in the second set, but set number one, he's using what he knows will be successful. Now you talk about cute and tricky. Let me go ahead and load up this replay here. Um, this is uh, maybe the most surprising moment of game number one. Uh, and here's that miss. Uh, but then How is this? After that, we oh, wait, hold on. Let me take that off. Here we go. RG's this is going to be that miss natal. Let me go ahead and pull this back RG's one more time. Um, so here you go. Royal Giant down at the bridge. Golden Knight working. Fish Boy behind. And the NATO just... What a, what a strange one here out of Mugi. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if that's the case of, you know, finger slipping or just didn't know the interaction. Because a lot of those kind of interactions, I, you know, I don't practice anymore, but I, I just know. I, you know, I know he gets to this tile and then I, I do that. So I don't know what the situation was. I would have to assume that it, it comes down to just a finger slippage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just interesting. We don't often see that. Here we go. Game number two. Mo up one. Remember, if Mo wins, they run it back because Moogie has that advantage. He has the winner's bracket advantage. So Moogie playing with a little bit of room here. But, you know, he does not want to have to go twice against his arch rival. So looking like it's going to be Hoggy Q Giant Skeleton for the often called Prince of Egypt, upgraded to Pharaoh as he claimed his golden ticket. Hog one direction, pigs Ooh. other direction. This is what I thought it was. Moogie going to be running the Royal Hogs, possibly mere Firecracker deck. Um, the one that I'm pretty sure Muhammad Light created uh, against Muhammad Light. And... I don't know what the matchup is going to be like, but the Barbs will put in a lot of work against those Og Earthquake logs. They still will be able to clean up if played correctly. So I really like the deck choice. Game number two coming out with something completely fresh for Moogie. And what a nice E-Spirit there from Moogie, so he doesn't have to worry about popping the Archer Queen ability on the defensive side. So very nicely played by Moogie, who now pressures into the right-hand side with the Royal Hogs. Tesla going to pull them for a moment. A couple will escape, though. And so far, it is Moogie with the advantage. Damage lead in both lanes. Mo goes Hog Rider into his weak side. Horses out the Royal Delivery does not wow. have enough for the bars on top of the Hog. E-Spirit also played. Not even sure that was necessary. And all of a sudden, that huge damage advantage becomes nothing. And, I mean, just great pressure right there from Muhammad Light. And, I mean, if we see Double Elixir happen three seconds earlier, the, the tower's completely healthy and he would have got the barbs off in time. Instead, tower down to 2040. Giant Skeleton cycles into the Archer Queen's side. Pigs going to go into the middle right of that Tesla. And the mirrors the pigs into the left-hand lane. Tesla high again. Musketeer trying to work on him. EQ defensively to slow them down. And it does end up doing the job pretty darn well. And now the Hog's going to come in right behind that Giant Skeleton. The Giant Skeleton Bomb not going to get any of the barbs, though, as they completely shut down the Hog Rider. So here we go. Sudden Death Overtime. Mohamed Light in the lead, but it feels like the advantage still leaning Moogie here. And there we go. We do see the second set. The Earthquake on defense as well. Earthquake on offense from Moogie. That's going to get the tower down fairly low. The level 13 Royal Hogs putting in work on top of the tower, getting it down to 1271. And huge lead and a 
pretty big mistake in this kind of situation. You can't afford to make those kind of mistakes. Nice King Tower activation from Muhammad Light. But are we going to see it again? The Royal Hogs, the second Royal Hogs, the Earthquake, the Cycle. I mean, Archer Queen plus Barbs, it is hard to get past this defense. And Barbs will be able to get down in time. Plenty of Elixir right now for Moogie. Firecracker does not get a shot on the left-hand lane. Final 90 seconds, 1271 to 1764. And Moogie looking like he's just kind of settling back for some defense here. He does have the double EQ at the end of the game if he needs it. And you see EQ cycling already is the Japanese pro. Same for Muhammad Light at the exact same time, although he does get some Firecracker damage. Are we going to see the double delivery? We see the first one. Barbs are going to come out instead. E-Spirit is going to make the jump. I was fairly certain that it was not going to. And then he is going to have to respond. No, the Archer Queen gets one last shot in, and that's going to allow him to get aggressive with the Royal Hogs. Possibly a second one set up. No, instead, Alex to go on defense with the Barbs. And Pig does not get there. Barbs on the right-hand side. Hog Rider in the middle through the Piggies. Delivery down. Does the Hog get a hit? It does not. EQ, though, does put the lead right back for Muhammad Light. 942. Mo tried to predict the Pigs on the left-hand side with the Fire Spirit. wasn't there. So now the Musketeer, Log, and Tesla trying to hold on to this left-hand tower. Defensive EQ plus Fire Spirit. But look at the Archer Queen on the right-hand side as well. So now both sides. And one wow. more shot gets in. That should do it. EQ wow. in for Mohammed Light. We're going to a game number three here, folks. Moogie could clutch up and win that $15,000. Mohammed Light looking to force a run back in our next five minutes. What a deck choice right there in game number two using Mohammed Light's deck against him. The, the barbs, the mirror, it, we... The, uh, the relax on the pressure when either double elixir or triple elixir happened was shocking, but definitely the correct response. So, you know, he wasn't able to set up with Teslas and he, he cycles the firecracker in the back and the archer queen in the back because he can't afford to go royal hogs mirror and then his opponent goes hog and then he just loses. The, the balance between pressuring and having enough elixir where he can defend properly and then still earthquake cycle or, or however he wants to get the damage I, to be able to pick up a deck on the fly like that 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 shouldn't be possible and that's the reason why Mugi is in this position in the winner's bracket where he controls his own destiny and look at all the work that Mo's spending on the left hand side to keep it up and the archer queen just gets away and gets a ton of shots and, you know, but before the Archer Queen did all that damage, Mohammed Light was already in a bad spot, and that put him in an unwinnable spot. So, uh, great dual lane pressure there. It's also crazy, you think about Triple Elixir, which at one point was a uh, was like a fun game mode, was like, a, yeah. was, like, was like a challenge mode. And then now, the addition of Triple Elixir into, in, into um, you know, the change of the game from six minutes to five minutes, and that last mm -hmm. minute being triple, completely changed the, the game and I, I think was much for the better of the game overall, much more exciting overall. But then look what we got there at the end. We get pigs, mirrored pigs, EQ, and then the Archer Queen on the opposite side, right? There might have been some more in there. Let's go look at that replay, see all the crazy stuff that happened there in that triple. And an okay. E-Spirit. And an E-Spirit, okay. So let's see what Mo's, uh, what Moogie's able to put down here. So the Fire Spirit comes down early. The right idea from Mo, but didn't get there. So yeah, so we have pigs. Archer Queen's already down. Second pigs. Delivery's already down. EQ in, um, and boom. Just and then the E Spirit on top of all that, right? Uh, wow, oh, that E Spirit was insane. That E Spirit was completely insane. So, uh, yeah, that's that's triple elixir there for you, folks. It's a it's a game changer. It certainly is, and it definitely makes some uh, some fun things happen uh, there at the end. Yeah, the, the, the improvement of the game from the the base level where it was six minutes and there was ties, like it, it haunts me to this day having to go against all the ladder players that used mortar and they would just sit on their mortar for five and a half minutes and either win the game or tie the game. There, there was no yeah. there was no lose for mortar players. And to think about it now where you have that triple lick, so you have it down to five minutes, you 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 have that just it the game I, it's very fun. It, it, it's very fun, and I get reminded of that when you were talking about that because four years ago we would never see that. It was never even 
feasible to see something like that happen. So yeah, yeah, that that's totally right. Very it's, excited to see it. It's super, super fun. Um, and of course, a rule that was in competitive, which was lowest single tower at the end of a match, ended up being built into the game, which was a huge game changer. Um, so, you know, getting rid of draws essentially was massive. Here we go. Game number three. First game for Moogie was Golem. Then he ran the Pig's Mirror deck, the Mo Light deck. And then Mo's first game was RG Fishboy and then Hog EQ. So here we go. Game number three. Moogie running some sort of minor cycle deck. And Mohammed Light with the cannon, with the Mother Witch. And the Spear Goblins, Royal Hogs now for him. And Icar going to be able to clean up the Hogs fairly well. Still going to get about 200 HP worth of damage. Cannon Cart is also going to be the move, but the Mother Witch does lock onto the tower, getting it all the way down to 2506 after the final shots from the Hog. And here we go. Mortar, Cannon Cart, Minor Cycle against Royal Hogs control with the Cannon Cart and the Mother Witch. So depending on the la the spell from Moogie, which is looking like it's going to be Fireball, the Fireball will be able to get a lot of value in this matchup if it is the Fireball. And Mortar going to force out some more expenditure on the side of Moogie and a little bit higher than he would like. No, he chooses to eat the Mortar damage. Wow. Just saving up for the Musketeer, placing it late, but not where the mus or where the mortar will get that final shot. Really solid timing right there. Knew that the mortar wasn't getting the shot, and I mean, I wouldn't have made that play because I would have been scared. But he understands the interactions, so he can get away with that. And notice the sequencing here, where it's the miner first to stop the cannon cart, then the log. Right, very smart sequencing here from Moogie. It also might have been the log was buried. I don't, I don't think the log was buried, but. Um, either way, good sequencing there to control the real danger first and then clean up. Either way, Mo does have a pretty significant lead. 13-13 barely touched our Mohammed Lights Towers. So Mo is very close to forcing us into a run back. Mortar is going to be placed within the range of the cannon and huge mistake right there. If he plays it one tile lower, it wouldn't have been a problem whatsoever. Instead, now in a dire situation, Cannon Cart will be stopped just in time. And both players are going to be running Poison instead of Fireball. Fireball was not used by either player in this set. Such a huge change from what 2021 was, where Fireball was the must-use card that kind of defined the meta in many ways. And here we're seeing times where Fireball doesn't even get played. <laughs> Tower all the way down to 761. Double cannon cart pressure, but I don't think that is the answer. Mother Witch is going to be able to take out the not wow. take out the skeleton. So okay. this is this is certainly some danger here. I mean, I think Mo, I think that Mo holds on, but now you see, yeah, log out of cycle. Oh, what a great musketeer from Mugi. And now the mortar going to get a lot of shots on that right hand tower. The double cannon cart doing its job, plus the poison. And now it is Mo still way in the lead here, but Moogie at least making things compelling at the end. 10-20 as he sets up Mortar Cannon Cart one more time. Cannon Cart going to try to take out the Golden Knight. Golden Knight will be able to dash on the Cannon Cart and the Mortar Cannon Cart. Plus the Bats not going to be able to do enough. The Snowball in this deck has gotten so much value every single time. The slowdown from the Snowball and just being able to take out the bats whenever he wants to. It is, uh, it is a lost cause for Moogie. This will go wow. to the second set. Wow. So those of you who voted for Mo in set number one, you got it. You got it right. Mohammed Light going to go ahead and get his poison down on that right-hand side. And we're going to a super grand final, folks. Reset, reload. Here comes the best of three between the two best for $15,000. Um, who do I think is going to win? Um, I don't know. I think, I think Mo's just comfy right now. He's just comfy. That's the big one, right? Like, right. Uh, I, I think also now that Mo has won one, like, even if he loses this next one, I think he's done the job, which is show people I can beat Moogie in a, in a big BO3. Um, this next one obviously has more stress on it, 
Um, but, you know, I, I feel like Moe's comfy. I feel like Moogie is uh, as... Moogie's a little uncomfortable. And we've seen more... Mis even though Moogie has won a ton today, we've seen more mistakes from Moogie today than we normally do. Right? That's right. the big one is... Uh, he, he's won because he's he's brilliant. He's had, had some good matchups. And he's recovered from mistakes. But we have seen we have not seen mistake free gameplay from Moogie like we're like we're used to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, and as far as Muhammad Light, it's it's not a lot of mistakes. It's I I, I will say I understand why you would go for Muhammad Light. I do. I get it. But uh, yeah, I I just gotta stick with Moogie. I think uh, I I really do want to see. What the statistics show for a winner's bracket and who wins it overall mm. in, in any major competition in the past, you know, two years or so, if a player is able to even take game one, what's the likelihood of them being able to take that set two? That's a, that's and a, if, go ahead. Yeah. I, I, I don't think, I think it's probably very advantageous to, uh, to the winner's bracket side. That's it's very. I'm very curious about that. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in, and guys, King Tower activation to open things up as it's Hog for Moogie and a, a NATO for Mo. If you're watching on YouTube or on Twitch, either one, thanks so much for joining us. Here we are at the Super Grand Final. If you haven't yet and you're on on Twitch, go ahead and give me a follow, please. And if you're on YouTube, the easiest way to support. Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Come on back. There's great esports content here all the time, just like this. Let's go ahead, focus on the action. E Giant for Mohammed Light against Hog Giant Skeleton for Moogie. Oh, Tesla on defense, placed brilliantly, aka placed on the board. Can the Archer Queen get the value he needs to? What is he going to place? Can the Golden Knight get the dash on top of the tower? It will. Golden Knight just like oh, it was before. What? The first push for Muhammad Light when he uses E-Giant is total destruction every single time. Someone on Twitch clip that NATO because that sealed game number one here it feels like. And right there, the back wow. and forth, the hog to be able to protect the aggro from reaching the Archer Queen. And just like that, Mookie takes the lead. I literally clicked off the <laughs> my screen to go see if someone had clipped that already. And when I, I was like, click, I was looking into my Twitch clips to see if I was going to download that. And right as I did that, someone, uh, that's when Moogie, I'm not looking, and Moogie goes and takes that tower back. So, awesome. Very cool. <laughs> and right there, uses the lightning on just the tower itself. Realizes that, you know, you need that tower gone. You 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 can overwhelm, try and go for the three crown. That way you get to go, you know, same lane. There's a lot of opportunities for him. And lightning using lightning on top of the tower by itself is the correct play. And it's it's just weird to see it part of the reason why I love watching these these high level competitors is just because they make those plays that don't make any sense whatsoever, and then you kind of immediately learn from them. And it, it, it's cool to see, you know, just the the, th the thought process behind, you know, just why they're so good. And the final poll results uh, should be up a little bit higher in the chat. Um, why can't I scroll YouTube chat? That's weird. Um, but they were about 72% picking Mo to win this final best of three. And right now with the Inferno wow. Tower burn. Oh, sizzle, sizzle, crackle, crackle. And just like that, the back and forth, let's say it, say it as it is, folks, slobber knocker goes the way of Mohammed Light to take game number one. Uh, wow, that was a whole lot of things that happened. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, game starts off with a brilliant push from the E-Giant, and it's crazy. We have not seen E-Giant be used all that often. We see it from a Haman Light, and that's basically it. And it might not even be basically. It might truly be it. Um, and it's kind of crazy because we're seeing a lot of success for that. But that's part of the reason why Muhammad Light is so successful. He can get away with those decks because you can't use the minor versus minor. You, you're not going to win against him in even matchups. So it allows him to use these decks that can get bad matchups because 
he knows his opponents can't have those even matchups because then he takes them. It, it, it's this huge mind game that Muhammad Light will just come out on top every, every single time. All right, let me go ahead and grab a few different replays here. It's going to be a little, a little chunky, folks, getting these replays through. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and load up a couple for us, though, to, uh, to look at that action first up. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. I believe this is going to be the first push by Mo. Let's go ahead and check that one out. And yeah, this will be that first E-Giant push by Mohamed Light to the to the uh, right-hand side. And man, this one, this is E-Giant for you, Josh. Yeah. Uh, Mother Witch placed over the bridge. Golden Knight placed in front of the Mother Witch. And Archer Queen. See, the Archer Queen was a great play. And then a, a pretty big mistake with the Fire Spray right there. I mean, you, you talked about it. Mugi is not playing perfect. Right there. Had he defended that perfectly... He's probably looking at his tower be about, you know, 1,100 or 1,500 HP. Instead, one simple mistake, it, it allowed him to get that tremendous lead at the beginning of the game. And, of course, there you go. It's the, the Archer Queen firing right back in our, in our next moment where... Uh, let me go ahead and reset this. There you go. Let me go ahead and replay that Archer Queen on that side. You see the Archer Queen comes in and just has enough to get that ability off, and that's just so huge. Mo does not have his NATO. He doesn't have the ability to reset. And you see Mo kind of like check the camera there for a second. I'm like, ah, okay, all right. And then we go to the overall final here. And this was the the nail in the coffin as the Inferno Tower comes in. Tesla just half-step late, and Inferno Dragon connects, and that's GG well played. Let's go ahead and jump in to game number two. Mo Light! Now with the match point, chance to be the champion, to win the $15,000, and more importantly, really get a massive bit of revenge on the man who, some would say, uh, took the world championship away from Mo Light. Game number two, Muhammad Light going to be running Minor, Valk, uh, you know, which could end up being, we see the guards could end up being Mortar, I would assume so. Moogie on the other end, going to be running Ghost, Ewiz, Magic Archer. We're going to be looking at Canicart, no big spell, versus Minor Mortar. Could be Fireball, could be Poison. I forgot which uh, spell he used in game one. But a, uh, a interest, an interesting matchup from two very popular decks from today's games. So, and he used the Lightning, so it could be both. So it looks like Drill Nato for uh for moogie he did not use drill yet in this matchup and obviously mohammed light um wait a second i'm a little bit confused here did mo oh no this is this is game two man because they because i was looking at Ooh. mo playing mortar in game three of the previous one and right i was like yeah. wait, wait wait what that can't be right that can't be right Miner goes right into the back. And there you go. You see the decks from game number one now. E was placed on top of the bats perfectly. E was plus cannon cart. Going to be able to take out the mortar before it gets that final shot. That was a lie. And as we head into double elixir, pretty big lead for Mugi. Not insurmountable. Um, and Muhammad Light on the other end. It, it, it's just whether or not he can defend. He doesn't have to worry about spell cycling to take out his towers. He has to fully be worried. Can he defend these pushes? Mortar goes bye-bye. Snowball takes care of the Magic Archer in response. 2286 to 2699. And a more minor chip. That cannon cart is getting cycled. Very nice timing overall for the cannon cart cycling for these miners. So... Mo's getting minor chip damage, but every time he's just feeding the cannon cart. Cannon cart going to get more value, going to take the aggro of the tower. Fireball going to be placed perfectly. Uh, 2083, 25, 25. Moogie's still in a great spot, just defending perfectly. And yeah, it has everything to do with these cannon carts. They're all recycled perfectly. Will the Golden Knight go back? It does. Valk on top of the e -Wiz. Ooh. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a Valk on tower. Big shot there. That Valk did a lot of it, a lot of good duty. Of course, it picked up the uh, the drill on one side, but also didn't get the lineup um, for Moogie with the Magic Archer. 
So that Valkyrie going coast to coast. Um, that's that could be, be some, a dash. Yeah. Oof. Again, oh, Cannon Cart goes away. What a great bar barrel from Mugi to get the Valk away from the Cannon Cart so it kills the Miner rather than letting the Valk tank for the Miner that time. This is so much fun to watch between these two. I can do it all day. <laughs> Golden Knight does dash. Oh. That's a ton of damage. And we see a Magic Archer line up behind the Cannon Cart. Yes, we do. Fireball there a half step later. Mo didn't want to predict there. I understand the, the reticence, the hesitance. But Mugi looking like he's in a good spot here. Va um, Magic Archer not in cycle. And this time, Cannon Cart is not back there. A Val guards push opposite lane. Magic Archer to work. More Musketeer low with bats high to stop the Cannon Cart. Golden Knight picked up by the Miner. 35 seconds left. Mo doing everything he can to stay in this one. And Fireball goes to the right-hand side. Magic Archer high, Cannon Cart behind, Mortar Plane defense low. Prediction NATO does not predict anything. 20 seconds left. Cannon Cart does get taken out by the Valk. You know, one more push. Muhammad Light doing everything he can, but the E was on top of the bats. Going to be a simple play. 9-16, 9-1-6. Not Ooh. going to be enough drill on top of the tower. Does get it down to 135. Not going to fully take it out. But that's all right. No more ties in CR. And we're heading into game number three of set number two of the entire tournament. Come on. We're all the way down to the end. Taking it down the width and breadth. Josh, shout out 916, our shared hometown, Sacramento. Where are you at? And here we go. You love it, Josh. A best of one for $5,000 for bragging rights for the championship. No golden ticket because they both got one already. Here we go. It's just pure Clash Royale, pure money on the line. Nothing else matters. Best of one. You can't use your best decks yep. because you have to worry about what you've already used, what your opponent knows you want to use. You know, you have the mind games, the pre-game, the post-game, the present game. Everything matters. You know, the analytical work, the, you know, can you show up when the pressure is on. Ah, this is it. This is Clash Royale. I, you know what? I like that. This is Clash Royale. That should be the tagline for, for CRL going forward. This is Clash Royale. I like that. Guys. See, uh, wait, I, I, have to, I have to say something. It, it was stolen from Rocket League. So oh. be, before we do anything oh, fair too enough. crazy with it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Clash Royale. It's in the game. Right? Okay, what there else? You go. There you go. There you go. Clash Royale, just do it. All right, how many more can you do? <laughs> Guys, uh, I'm going to do one more vote here because we're going down to our final, final winner. One more poll in the chat. Final winner. Will it be Mo Light? Will it be Moogie? Poll's going live right now. Get your, get your votes in, folks. Will it be Mo Light? Will it be Moogie? And let's see, I do see some, some friendly stuff. Thanks for the stream, Rich and Josh says, Elro, thank you very much. Um, uh, let's take a look at, you know what, let's go, let's go, uh, go jump over to Twitch chat here for, for one second. So I know that we've got a, a healthy group over on Twitch. Um, people saying Moogie Easy over there. Um, let's see, I'm not going to put that one on screen. Um, come on, guys, keep the chat clean. Uh, I'd say Moogie wins. A lot of people are going for Moogie right now. A okay. lot of people saying Moogie here at the end. Moogie's still losing it in the YouTube chat, but much better than it was. It was 2575. Now it's 3763, unless it's updated. The 37. Chair, that's not bad for Moogie. Um, uh, let's see. Latac, uh, longtime competitive player out here saying Mo for the storyline. I feel that, Latac. Good call. Um, uh, Cat, Momo the Goat, Burger King on top. There's a lot happening all there in that one. Um, let's see. Attack Saint Tolvoth in loser's bracket and takes down Moogie in revenge. That's a great storyline. I feel it, especially with them both definitely going to CRL World Finals. Keep building that storyline up. Give me more stuff to talk about when we get to the end of the year. You know what I mean? Um, no MC, uh, no GC Mitch says, uh, Rich, thank you for the best Saturday of my life. 
Uh, I'm happy to have to have helped you with that, and also um, get out there, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's there's some life to live. Um, how long until finals? Uh, let's see, just a couple of. As soon as they have decks ready, we're going. Um, nobody, yeah, please, nobody repeat a card. Oh my lord! Um, <laughs> right now, YouTube chat has Mo Light winning by five um, by sixty three percent. So the Mo Light win has gotten gone down a bit. Randy's world. Um, thank you very much for the five dollar super chat. I appreciate that, Randy. Uh, thank you so much for the support. And again, guys, this is the final game of the stream. After this, we say bye. We turn off the stream. I go outside, throw a frisbee for a few hours. Uh, maybe go to the pool, enjoy myself. I guess I wear the sunglasses outside as well as inside the studio, everybody. Uh, but we're here to the final game. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like this video, follow on Twitch. Uh, go ahead and follow Josh on Twitter at ah uh, with like fifty thousand a h's for no reason. Um, <laughs> Ah, crap on Twitter. Let's go ahead and get it. Five minutes for $5,000. Looking like Mo going hoggy Q in game number three. Is Archer moving. Queen. Archer Queen is available for Muhammad Light, so that is definitely something that could be available to him. And there we go, Royal Hogs placed at the bridge. Not going to be doing Hog EQ, instead moving on to Royal Hogs. This normally runs cannon, so is he running the cannon variation against Lava Hound? Uh, that's right, it could be the cannon variation with Archer Queen Royal Delivery. So that'll be interesting to see. Tesla has not been used, so it would be interesting. Inferno Tower hasn't been used, so he could make the outplay of his life and use one of those cards. Um... I, I don't know how tricky they uh. want to get in the analytical booth, but there we go. We do see the cannon be used. So I, I'm i assuming delivery is in here. It usually is, and there you go for the cleanup. Um, cannon, obviously, cheaper. Um, not much on the ground that you're worried about here. Thoughts on this matchup, Josh? Mine are used in on defense. Uh, let's see. Matchup overall, you do have the Earthquake, so you do have to worry about that. Royal Hogs will be able to take a tower pretty much guaranteed. So that will be a problem for Mookie. When you have the Royal Hogs pressure and you only have Tombstone, you're just down a tower basically guaranteed. Uh, as far as the overall matchup, a you know Royal Hogs are no longer in cycle. We'll see the Lava get popped. Whether or not the Archer Queen can get the value he needs, and I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. These Lava decks are just so strong once they get that right setup especially when you only have Earthquake as your big spell. Here we go into double Elixir, and the deeper this goes, the more dangerous it gets for the Pharaoh as he drops the delivery early to protect the Archer Queen. Second cannon down to work on the Miner and pick up some of those pups. Pigs into the right-hand side, Tombstone high this time. AQ still alive. Can she get a second ability off? That would be huge. Skeleton King there. Archer Queen does get the second ability, and that's going to take care of these skeleton, these skeleton dragons. So, big time plays for Mohammed Light, who does have the lead, 1753 to 2432. Lava placed down. Skeleton King does get two shots right there, so that's going to be very important. Royal Hogs would have got the tower down to sub a thousand instead. 1325, still somewhat healthy. Question is, can he get an arrows prediction on top of the Fire Spirit when he goes in with the push? The delivery plus fire spirit continues to take it out, and that just can't be the minor placement. Ooh. It inst oh my goodness! Great timing with the delivery. Muhammad like controlling this game through and through. Royal Hogs popped in front of the Archer Queen Earthquake as well. I don't know if he's going to be able to stop these pushes, especially once it hits triple elixir. AQ goes into ability. Skellies do protect the flying machine. Delivery comes up high to try to keep this in the mix. Archer Queen stays alive a little bit longer. Flying Machine still alive, though. That's absolutely huge as the pigs won't do much. If that AQ stayed up, that would have been a different story. But right now, Delivery has to come out early here. This is almost triple elixir time. Mo will have plenty of defensive options. But Lava Hound, Mega Minion, Skeleton King on the board at the moment. Flying Machine in the middle, good cannon high to protect the Archer Queen. No Fire Spirit in Cycle, so he is going to have to worry about that. No Skeletons Miner does not hit the Archer Queen because of the ability getting popped. Oh my Delivery word. not going to be... Wow. It is going to come down, 
And again, clean defense right there. 1373 to 971. Miner in the front. Fly Machine going to lock onto the cannon, not onto the tower. Skelly should be able to clean that up as well. And he's got probably one more push. Otherwise, these Royal Hogs plus the Earthquake, it will get it down. Tombstone, not really necessary. And maybe he could have popped that lava in front of everything. Instead, that's just another defensive sequence that will be forced out of Mugi. Delivery plus log. 972 top right hand side. Pigs in. EQ this time does predict the tombstone. Log behind. Archer Queen could get a second ability again. Could he do it twice in one game? Do a double ability AQ. Gets it right before the fly machine comes out. Miner in. Delivery high. And that's going to be it. Mohammed Light takes his revenge on Mugi. Wins the first, wins the run back, shows the snow globe, takes home $15,000, and Moogie's going to have to wait a while, stewing on this one as the rivalry only goes deeper. Oh, what a set from Muhammad Light. What a set overall. Back and forth. It always went 1-1-1, one, one, one. you know... Muhammad Light, brilliant gameplay overall, never allowed his opponent to try and get the prediction arrows. He tried time and time again, placing the arrows high, placing the arrows low. Can he catch the fire spirit? No. Does the double cannons, defends perfectly, doesn't get too aggressive, but still remains aggressive enough where he can't build that push. Brilliant gameplay for Muhammad all day. I, you know, loses game number one in the and immediately drops to the loser's bracket just to give himself a challenge. I, I don't know how he can make it harder on himself to make it even more impressive. Uh, you know, it, it, this it, Muhammad Light, again, winner of another tournament. $15,000 and that golden ticket, he already has one. So Mugi still gets 10K and a golden ticket trip to Clash Royale League World Finals. So we do have our third golden ticket finalist, Viper, taking home 6,000 after all of that, but it is Mohamed Light on top. The reign of terror continues. The dynasty, if you will. And that's that's the word right now. It's hard to call something a dynasty when it's one player, but it's a <laughs> dynasty for Mohamed Light. It is. No no one can stop him. I mean, it, 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 I mean with Everything compiled together, the, the analytical work, whether it's Jeebus or Julesy or, you know, just a random person helping him out, it, it, top to bottom, I guess it is a dynasty, you know, he, he does have a team behind him, uh, so there there's just levels to it, and he's clearly levels above the competition right now. Levels, just, just insane.